Hello everyone, welcome back to Toretto's live classes. As you all know that we have started with the one of the most fundamental chapter is nothing but chemical reaction and equations. We have covered so many important concepts so far. We know like how chemical reaction takes place. We have seen how chemical changes are takes, taking places, right? Then we have uh, studied about the chemical equation. It's not very convenient to write each and every word or each and every uh, changes. So we have a chemical equation where we are putting all the reactants and products together, right? That's what we have seen or uh, know learn about chemical reaction. After that, we talked about the balancing of chemical reaction, right? So total number of uh, like uh, atoms which are present on uh, LHS has to be equal to RHS, right? That means product side. So that is where we, uh, you know, learn about balancing of any chemical reaction. Okay? Are you all able to recall it, or you are finding this very new? No, right? So uh, still, if you are getting confused, let's recall whatever we have studied in the last class. Okay? So yeah, uh, that was like these were the concepts which we studied. First was law of conservation of mass. Then we learn about balancing chemical reaction. So uh, I think that class was dedicated for balancing of chemical reaction. We took 10 examples of different chemical reactions. I hope you all are able to recall. Okay, with the help of uh, like uh, uh, some, you know, uh, hit and trial method, we try to balance the chemical reactions. Okay. <clears throat> then uh, like uh, it was based on the law of conservation of mass i hope you all are able to recall something like this if i am having a to b right and then we are getting a b if this is the product okay or this is what is the chemical reaction okay so this is what your chemical uh, like uh, stoichiometric uh, coefficient right here, if uh, if it's not uh, like it was understood that if it is nothing, it is understood that it's one. Okay, so that's how we say this is this was a chemical reaction. These are reactants, right? And these are products. So we need to balance this chemical reaction. Okay, it is not balanced. If you will see, here only 1A present, there is only 1A, that is atom. Here are 2B, here is only 1B. So, we needed to balance this chemical reaction and we have uh, thoroughly seen or learned about balancing of chemical reaction. Okay, now what we are going to in today's class. So, here are some, uh, you know, uh, concepts which we will be covering. First of all, whenever we are having a chemical reaction, okay, or any chemical change is happening, many reactants are reacting together, giving you different products, okay, that is all about chemical reaction. But, there are chemical reactions, okay, so it is not going to happen very naturally or spontaneously. In the laboratories or in the industries, we need to supply some, you know, heat, or uh, some chemical conditions are supposed to taken care of. What do you mean by chemical conditions? Chemical conditions can be, you know, increasing or decreasing temperature of the particular reaction or, you know, supplying, uh, applying a particular pressure to the, you know, that required chemical reaction to get the products, okay? Or sometimes uh, it will be, you know, in that way like, okay, so for specific reaction, we need sunlight also. Okay, so it depends on the, you know, requirement or, uh, or the chemical conditions of that chemical reactions, we need to provide proper information in the equation itself. I hope I told you like uh, in the last, uh, last to last class, I guess. So, there we talked about how we can make our uh, chemical reaction informative. Okay, though it is looking very small, then we need to, you know, put each and every detail information in it, but with the help of symbols. Okay, so if uh, like, uh, let's suppose if A is reacting with B, but it's, this is the reaction which is happening, let's suppose at 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you need to mention the temperature. Okay, suppose if it needs, uh, like we can boil off the system okay that much of heat is required in case so what we uh, show we show this symbol triangle which shows or signifies what heat correct 
also we talked about the you uh, know physical states of these reactants it can be solid it can be liquid it can be gaseous state again if this reaction is happening we are getting some products okay it can be in gaseous state it can be in liquid state or there will be you know uh, any evolution of gas etc or uh, there will be some uh, ppt formation is there so we need to show the arrow in the downward so this is nothing but a required information of that particular chemical reaction and it may differ from reaction to reaction that is what we have covered but again <clears throat> we need to understand like uh, we are taking uh, some reactants okay these reactants are having their own masses and they are going to give you products also products are having their own masses again if i am having uh, if, if i am getting any product uh, in the form of liquid or in the form of gaseous okay state so definitely they are having their own volume right so we uh, like we are going to interpret that also okay how much uh, like uh, how much kg of how much gram of reactants are giving me how much gram of product or how much ml of uh, liquid or gaseous uh, is giving me how much product okay that relationship also can get revealed with the help of the information which we are you know going to put in the chemical reaction okay so let's try to understand that also apart from that we are going to move towards the next session of uh, this big chapter is nothing but types of chemical reaction as uh, like if you you uh, you must be saying ma'am you are just talking about the chemical reactions which are happening in our surrounding okay so there are so many reactions now it is very inconvenient or hard for us to you know study all the reactions all together that's why we are having different types of chemical reactions we have categorized them in different types so what are these types first is chemical combination okay second is decomposition reaction third is displacement reaction then we are having double displacement reaction precipitation reaction then we are having neutralization and followed by very important oxidation and reduction that is also called as what i'll write something like this red ox reduction r e d red comes from reduction o x comes from oxidation so these are some important chemical reactions which we are going to learn one by one okay so these are some learning objectives do not get very confused or panic okay this looks very big or huge yes it is but it is very important too and we are going to learn this reaction slowly and you know i am going to give you some examples through which you will be able to understand these reactions very quickly and very easily okay so shall we get started okay so <clears throat> see whenever we write any chemical reactions basically reactants and products formula and names okay so this is what we you know come uh, whenever we are having any chemical reaction this is what we are able to decode or understand correct so i told you that uh, maybe you will uh, you will get any word equation okay let's suppose sodium is reacting with uh, uh, hydrogen uh, sorry sodium is reacting with water giving you sodium hydroxide and there is release of hydrogen if this is the reaction then you can quickly write about what okay sodium is reacting with uh, h2o giving you sodium hydroxide and there is a release of h2 so what is the point here reactants and products with their uh, formula and names can be get you know uh, decoded so uh, just by reading the sentences i can write about their symbols such as na formula h2o naoh molecules such as h2 okay that becomes very easy you don't have to write always sodium hydroxide or water or uh, dihydrogen oxide or etc no okay so i we i can interpret with the help of this reaction okay water sodium hydroxide h2o h2 likewise okay moving i like uh, what i'm trying to you know say here what that uh, chemical reaction tells us okay reactants and products relative amounts required of course okay so now uh, after balancing the chemical reaction suppose if i want to balance this reaction to 
4, 2 and yeah. Okay, so this becomes your balanced chemical reaction. Now, with this balanced chemical reaction, what it tells? It tells two parts of sodium reacts with two parts of H2O, giving you two parts of NaOH along with the liberation of a molecule, which is hydrogen. Okay, so I can say 2, 2, 2, 1. Okay, so this can be, you know, uh, we can uh, uh, understand from the reaction. So that's what they amounts relative amount which is required to get hydrogen or sodium hydroxide so we know now we know uh, like these are the amounts which we required now further sorry moving ahead i can also you know calculate a molecular mass like okay so uh, two h2o molecule as uh, molecules are going to give you when they are going to react with two atoms of sodium okay exactly how much mass do we need okay so how much mass is getting involved to produce certain amount of products again mass to mass you know relationship is getting conveyed from this reaction again so reaction conditions such as heat change physical states of reactants and products or oh yes definitely we are going to indicate those also so now we know that solid then it is liquid going to give you salt and then there is a, a release of a gaseous hydrogen Okay, so this is what possible reaction, possible information which one can uh, obtain from the chemical reaction. Also, we are having something. So these that that is what I'm talking about mass mass relationship. So let's suppose 10 gram of any reactants is going to give you let's suppose 5 gram of any product that is P1 along with 5 gram of P2 that is product 2. Okay, so that ratio becomes fixed, that um, relationship becomes fixed actually, that from this we can understand, okay, mass to mass relationship is there in that particular reaction. Likewise, mass to volume relationship, so volume for solids and uh, liquids, okay, so this much of uh, gram of solids are getting, you know, reacted, solids uh, are getting reacted and they are giving you certain amount of volume of that solid product or liquid product or gaseous product. So, we can reveal that relationship also. Then volume volume relationship. If we are using some sol uh, liquids and gaseous uh, substances in our reactant sites, so we are having their volumes. Okay. So, how much uh, uh, the volume will be there on the product side? That also that is what volume to volume relationship is getting conveyed through this information which is there in the chemical reaction. Then mass to number of molecules relationship and mass to sorry volume to number of molecules relationship is getting revealed with the help of any chemical or certain chemical reaction. Okay, so <clears throat> these are very fundamental things which we are obtaining from the chemical reactions. Okay, so how much mass do I need to put so that I will get this much of volume from the products? Okay, that is what is already given in the chemical reaction. Okay, once you are going to balance any chemical reaction, you are going to see this relationship depends, it varies from reaction to reaction. Okay, soon we are going to cover a numerical based on this so that you will able to understand whatever I am talking about right now. Okay, so quickly if you want to uh, write uh, this thing quickly, you can do this, make a note of this. done yes now i want you all to revise your basics which we have learned in grade 9th there was this chapter atoms and molecules are you all able to remember it in that chapter we have studied about the mole concept okay so mole is the unit which we use to you know understand number of atoms or molecules or ions or any chemical species uh, which is there in chemistry okay that is what is general unit for one mole one mole of anything has let's suppose one mole of substance has 6.023 to 23 molecules okay or one mole of uh, 
element has 6.023 atoms that is nothing but your Avogadro's number right. So, this is what is fundamental that is uh, we have covered the relationship between one mole of anything like how many molecules uh, one uh, a molecule will have, one substance will have, how many you know uh, atoms an element will have that is what we have seen. Apart from that we also saw that 1 gram atomic weight is equivalent to 1 mole of any element. Also 1 gram molecular weight is equivalent to 1 mole of the substance. Right? So, let me give an example quickly. Suppose I am saying uh, that 1 mole of hydrogen atom has what? How many uh, atom it has? 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 atoms, hydrogen atoms, right? Which is also equal to or uh, equivalent to 1 gram atomic mass G A M right. We are talking about hydrogen as an atom. So, what is gram atomic mass of hydrogen atom? 1 gram. So, actually it is nothing but 1 mole of hydrogen atom is equal to 1 gram atomic mass of hydrogen right. Suppose I am talking about molecule now, 1 mole of H2 molecule will have how many number of molecules? 6.023 molecules which is equivalent to 1 gram molecular weight. Here H2 which is equals to 2 gram molecular mass, okay. So that is what is the relationship. Okay, so we have studied this in our lower grades. It was just a quick revision. Quickly, you can make a note of this thing. Done? Yes, also here is the last point that one mole of if this is uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know atoms and molecules here we are having something different uh, for gaseous state that one mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure what is the volume of that gas it is 22.4 liter at one mole of any gas okay 22.4 liter of volume. So, based on this knowledge, we are going to solve some question, okay. One question is there. It is asking that calculate the volume, mass and number of molecules of hydrogen gas. We need to find out three things. One is volume, second is mass, third is number of molecules of hydrogen gas, which liberated when 230 gram of sodium reacts with excess of water at standard temperature and pressure. Okay, so, they are asking us to calculate volume, mass and number of molecules of hydrogen gas. So, here we need to understand what is the chemical reaction. So, they have given that also. Liberated when? When 230 gram of sodium is reacting with water. So, basically now we need to understand like what is this. Okay. So, sodium is reacting with excess of water that is what I can figure out. Okay, So, I am writing sodium is reacting with water Okay, gives you what if I am not wrong it gives sodium hydroxide correct and there is a release of H2 hydrogen gas. But tell me is this a balanced reaction? Na plus H2O, NaOH plus H2. Now it is not. 
So let's do it to then. Yeah. So this is what is your balanced chemical reaction looks like. That means see now here also 2 Na reacting with 2 H2O giving you uh, okay 2 NaOH plus there is release of water. Just calculate the total number of hydrogen 2 plus 2 4 2 yeah it's, it's balanced okay. So we are provided with this atomic masses of sodium 23 U then oxygen 16 U hydrogen 1 U okay. So now let us calculate the you know oh, let us see whether it is following a law of conservation of mass or not. So 2 Na that means we are having 46 U here for sodium right and here for hydrogen okay uh, 2 plus 16 okay giving you 18 but we are having like this is for 1 H2 okay so we are having 2 H2 multiply by 2 giving you 36 U right for uh, hydro uh, H2O. So now 46 and 36 how much is this 82 U right. So this is what is the mass on LHS side ok. So now let us quickly check uh, what is happening there sodium 23 uh, sorry 23 plus 16 plus 1 the, uh, 2 4 ok so it is into 2 right it's 2 I have calculated this for one single NaOH. So we need to multiply it with 2 that is giving you what 80 U right and hydrogen here 2 U giving you 82 U that means it is balanced ok 82 U. So again try to understand <coughs> what they have given in the you know uh, question. So basically what is the relation 46 U is giving you hydrogen which is 2 U ok or if I want to uh, talk in terms of gram because they have given that 230 gram of sodium uh, like hydrogen uh, 230 gram of sodium is reacting with excess of water and that is how we need to calculate uh, the you know uh, the amount of or the volume of gas which is getting liberated in uh, grams ok. So let us suppose if I am putting it in like this 46 gram is giving me 2 gram of H2 46 gram of Na I will write it here is giving me 2 gram of H2 then how much uh, like a 230 gram of Na will give us that is what they are asking for the, which is nothing but they are asking for mass. So just cross multiply here. 230 to 2 divided by 46 right so yeah 10 gram what will be the mass when 230 gram of sodium is reacting with water hydrogen is getting released that is for sure but what is the mass of that releasing hydrogen that is 10 gram so this becomes your mass of H2 okay it's done. Now uh, the next thing which they are asking or they are interested in what volume. So just now we have studied like 1 mole of any gas as STP gives you 22.4 liter of volume. So I will write here 1 mole of hydrogen is also going to give me what 22.4 liter of uh, like volume wise okay 22.4. Then what do you think here uh, if I am having what then 10 gram of hydrogen will be giving what 22.4 into 10 20 to, like 2 to 4 liter of hydrogen will get liberated out ok. So this becomes your volume ok mass volume. I am going to give you some time that uh, like afterwards you can write uh, the solution here. Mass volume then they are asking number of molecules, number of molecules of hydrogen gases, number of molecules. So tell me like uh, 1 mole of hydrogen has, 1 mole of H2 has Na, Avogadro's number right. 
which is nothing but 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 molecules, one mole of hydrogen has, right? Uh, or I can say one gram of H2 has this much, that is uh, uh, 6.022 into 10 raised to 23. Then tell me, like how much, how many uh, hydrogen do, do we have here? If we will see, 1 gram of H2 is giving you 6.022023 numbers of moles, okay. So, here we are having H2 as a molecule, right. So, uh, now we need to understand like 1 gram of hydrogen atom, sorry, if I am writing here hydrogen atom. This is my atom is giving me 6.022023 molecules. Then uh, hydrogen as a molecule will be giving me 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 into what? 2. Okay. So this must be around uh, 10 raised to 23 okay 30 point 11 into 23 you need to calculate it okay after the calculation you are going to get this or we can say 3.011 into 10 raised to 24 numbers of molecules of hydrogen gas okay so this becomes your number of molecules this is what they are asking for okay these are some values with the answers so let's recall quickly so, they are asking that if uh, like uh, what is the ideal equation, the balanced chemical equation says that 46 gram of sodium when it is reacting with what 36 gram of uh, H2O going to give you uh, sodium hydroxide here uh, we, we will be talking about in terms of ML obviously is going to give you sodium hydroxide along with the release of hydrogen. Okay. So, 46 gram of so, uh, sodium is giving you 2 gram of hydrogen. Then 230 gram of sodium will be giving how much? Okay, and that's why we uh, cross multiply. This is what is our equation. Then we went for the mathematical calculation. So uh, 230 into 2 divided by 46. If you uh, like just calculate it quickly, then your answer is what 10 gram, which means 230 gram of sodium is going to give you 10 gram of hydrogen mass wise. Now, let us talk about volume wise. So, we know that a standard value when 1 mole of any gas uh, like uh, what here also like 1 mole of any gas at standard room temperature occupies how much like what is the volume 22.4 liter is the volume. So, based on this I can say uh, like we are having here 10 gram of uh, hydrogen if I am going to multiply it with 10 definitely it is going to give me 2 to uh, 4 liter of H2 that is hydrogen gas okay that volume wise that is why the unit is important liter. Then they are asking tell us how many uh, molecules uh, will be getting liberated they are talking about molecules. Now I know one mole of hydrogen atom has 6.022 into 23 uh, uh, atoms right here they are talking about molecules. So H2 has its gram uh, mass uh, gram molecular mass is 2. So straightforward what we can do? We can multiply Avogadro's numbers by 2, which is giving us 30.11 10 raised to 23. And just you know shift the uh, decimal, and that's why it becomes your 3.011 in 10 raised to 24 molecules of hydrogen. So we have calculated hydrogen in terms of mass, in terms of volume, in terms of number of molecules. Okay. So that is what is the interpretation from the reaction. See this is what is given through the you know this equation has been given through this chemical reaction and based on that we just applied you know uh, uh, like a simple mathematical calculation helped us to get the answer. I knew this standard information that is why we got like how many uh, uh, volume will be 10 gram of H2 will be having. I know 1 mole of uh, hydrogen is having or any gas having at STP 22.4 liter. So, that on the basis of that we calculated the volume. I knew 1 mole of hydrogen uh, atom has Avogadro's number or the number of molecule is 6.022 into 23 molecules it has. Then how many molecules 
like two gram of H two will be having, or sorry, a uh, uh, H two molecule will be having. Okay, so that was all about it. Just quickly uh, make a note of this. So uh, I'll just enlist all the things. First, you need to understand what they have asked. Then, secondly, what they have given. You are going to get atomic masses in the brackets. Okay. Then, read the word equation. Out of uh, from that, you just make your chemical equation. Then, balance that chemical equation correctly. And then, see like um, what is the mass to volume ratio or what is mass to mass ratio then go for the calculation one by one bit mass or volume or number of molecules or atoms etc anything got it okay moving ahead <clears throat> we are having types of chemical reactions so chemical reaction involves the breaking and making of bonds so chemical reaction involves breaking and making of bonds between atoms to produce new substances correct if you are provided with uh, suppose this is what is uh, a chemical such as ab okay so they are uh, attracted towards each other or they are feeling a uh, force of attraction because they are having chemical bond in between and suppose this is getting you know uh, like it is uh, experiencing chemical change so basically the bond which these two atoms or molecules has is going to break down and it uh, uh, both of them are going to get separate or we are having two atoms these two atoms are getting combined with the certain chemical conditions obviously so that's how they are going to form a bond your breaking took place your bond making took place and that is all about what your bonding that is what we say chemical bonding is happening okay So basically, if you see any chemical reaction, either uh, there is a break, uh, like a making of bonds or breaking of bonds. These are only two principles on which chemical reaction works. Okay. So according to that, we have divided uh, different chemical reactions. They are like this. First is combination reaction. Second is decomposition reaction. Followed by displacement reaction. Then we are having double decomposition reaction. So, do not get uh, worried about this. We are these are very simple, very easy to understand, and uh, we need to understand their definition with some certain examples. Okay. So one by one, we are going to learn about all of this. Also, we are having precipitation, oxidation, reduction, oxidation, etc. But in uh, the next or other session. Here we are going to focus about, we are going to talk about the very first reaction is nothing but combination reaction. Now tell me what do you understand by the word combination? Two or more things are getting combined and that is how the reaction is happening. Combination, what itself tells us. So here uh, let us suppose we are having so many substances, Okay, I am just you know uh, giving it, adding them with the help of different symbols these are the reactants and now they are going to form some one single product reactant 1 reactant 2 reactant 3 we used reactants more than one okay these reactants are combined some bonds got form among them among these reactants and now we are with a product we are having a one single product i would like to write here as single product only one product is getting formed after the combination of one or more reactants so always try to understand when we see when we learn about combination reactions 
more than one reactants can get combined chemically to give only one single product. Whenever you are going to see this trend, you should understand this is nothing but a combination reaction. This is nothing but a combination reaction. So, let me revise it once again. The chemical reaction in which two or more substances such as a, it can be an element, it can be compound, okay. When they combine to form single product, okay, mark it as very, very important. A single, one single product is getting formed. This is what we called as what? Combination reaction. Easy to follow? Is there any, you know, uh, difficulty to understand this? If yes, then let us uh, see one example so that you, you will not get confused much. See, this is what is general equation we have given A and B, reactant 1, reactant 2, both are reacting to give you one single product, one single product, one product. This is what is general reaction for combination reaction, okay. A plus B giving me AB, it is my combination reaction, that is it. So, now based on this, try to understand some examples. <clears throat> See here we are getting formation of magnesium oxide, but when two parts of magnesium which is in solid state is reacting with oxygen or I say one part of oxygen which is in gaseous state, magnesium and oxygen both are getting combined. So, how many reactants we use here? Two reactants, right? But product is only one that is what magnesium oxide along with the release of heat okay heat is getting generated out when we are seeing or we are uh, you know uh, getting mgo magnesium oxide so one one single product but so many reactants or more than one reactants are getting involved this is what combination reaction another example here is the formation of uh, carbon dioxide gas how one carbon one oxygen getting combined giving you one product that is CO2 carbon dioxide. Again formation of water, hydrogen, oxygen, water with their respective physical states. Yes, now uh, the different example is what <clears throat> we are having calcium oxide, we are having calcium oxide which is also called as quick lime is getting reacted with water. Calcium oxide is reacting with water to give you select lime that is what calcium hydroxide, one single product again and uh, try to remember these words quick lime and select lime, select lime is uh, calcium hydroxide and quick lime is calcium oxide, okay. Moving ahead, we are having this quick lime when it is getting you know uh, reacted with carbon dioxide is going to give you limestone that is calcium carbonate which is nothing but marble which we are which we use okay CaCO3 formation of your marble is like this quick lime reacting with CO2 giving you calcium carbonate and there is also nothing but a white wash where this is what we use for white wash technique okay. So, this is how it is very important to understand combination reaction okay. So, if we will see this is what we observe in daily life this is what is H2O which we drink this is also like a marble which we use. So, combination reaction is very relevant to our daily life also that I can uh, figure out by looking at these reactions, ok. So, quickly make a note of these reactions. Is there any confusion, is there any doubt so far? So, always try to understand the general chemical reaction. Many products, uh, many reactants, so one single product is your combination reaction. Shall we move ahead? Okay, after completing a uh, combination reaction, we are having decomposition reaction. Decomposition, what is the word here? Decomposition, 
if I am asking you all to split the word, composition, something is getting composed, something is getting combined, but what will be the, you know, opposite of that? Decomposition, something is getting broken down, we are breaking something, here it is completely or, you know, uh, totally opposite of combination reaction. So, decomposition reaction is in reverse of combination reaction, that is point number one. So, why? Because in combination reaction, we have studied just now that so many reactants are getting reacted togetherly to give you one single product, right? Now, the product which we have obtained can get broken down into so many uh, reactants again. So, it is a reverse reaction, okay? So, let us try to understand it. The chemical reaction in which a single substance, a single substance breaks down into two or more products, that is what I told you just now. A single substance breaks down in two or more products is known as your decomposition reaction. You are going to decompose the substance. You are going to break that substance into many. Okay. That is what your uh, decomposition reaction. So, here is some general representation. Okay. So, suppose this is what is your A to B. Two parts of like two atoms of A and one part of uh, one atom of B. A to B that is one single substance. But here it is acting as what? Reactant because it is on the LHS side of the chemical equation. A to B. On heating, let us suppose we are heating this uh, uh, reaction or this uh, reactant is giving you A, B, A. These are two products P1 P2. These are two products. So, one single reactant is getting break down to give you so many products. It is nothing but what? Decomposition reaction. Clear? <coughs> again, uh, this is a, again sim simple general re reaction. If we are having one single reactant is getting uh, uh, decomposed to A and B. Decomposed into A and B. Okay. Yeah, decomposition reactions are always reverse of combination reaction. See, if I will write here, A plus B is giving me AB. That was combination reaction. Now, AB is getting broken down into A and B. AB is getting broken down into A and B. So, this becomes your combination reaction combination reaction, this becomes your decomposition reaction, okay. Combination and decomposition, these are general chemical equations, okay. Try to understand some examples of it. We are having calcium carbonate, just now we saw the formation of this calcium carbonate, which is limestone, which is a marble, right. Now, what if I am going to break down the marble, what am I going to get? You, you will be getting CaO and CO2. These are two different products which we have obtained by breaking by decomposition of CaCO3. Okay. Again, we are having ferrous sulfate as a salt which is of course in solid state. If you are going to break it down, you are going to get uh, Fe2O3, uh, then, then, then there will be SO2 gas and then SO3 gas also will be there. These are all the products which we are getting after the decomposition of FeSO4, okay. Then we are having, lead, uh, see this is a PbNO3 twice, this is your uh, chemical uh, or reactant on decomposition, okay, these are some different products which we are going to obtain that is lead uh, oxide, then uh, your nitrogen dioxide, oxygen will get release out because you have broken down this one single reactant into many products, okay. That is how we say the decomposition reaction is, okay. So, in today's class, we have covered like what is the possible information a chemical reaction can give us, okay. Be it mass to mass volume, mass to mass uh, relationship or uh, mass to volume relationship, how many number of molecules are going to generate, how many numbers of atoms are going to generate in that particular reaction. We have seen a question based on it, okay. Then how to calculate volume of that particular compound or reactant or mass or number of molecules, we have seen the calculation of that part. Then we moved ahead and we have seen the two types of chemical reaction. 
first is what combination and second is decomposition reaction okay now in our next session we are going to continue with the same type of chemical reaction we are going to see how many different types of decomposition reactions are there okay till then just re uh, revise whatever we have learned today okay bye bye take care